Well, two of the congressmen who question Ken Lewis join us now. Representative Jim Jordan, a Republican of Ohio, and Representative Jerry Conley. He is a Democrat of Virginia. They join us from Capitol Hill. Good to see you, gentlemen. Uh, congressman Jordan, first you did, well, first to, to either one of you, did either of you hear anything from Ken Lewis that you felt was suspect? Well, no, no, I didn't. I, I felt he was uh, giving us the truth. Uh, the fact that you have the government here saying, look, if you don't go along with this Merrill Lynch deal, we're going to get rid of you and get rid of your board is just unprecedented. Uh, you know, I mean, we're, we're at a point where we got a PESAR, we got an auto task force, and now we find out this was going on at the beginnings of the TARP program. Uh, again, just reinforcing this idea why we should have never went down this road to begin with. The problems that happen when you got the government trying to run the private sector, trying to run private businesses. The, 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 the part that really got to me, though, was the October 13th meeting where uh, Geithner, uh, Bernanke, Paulson brought in the nine CEOs of the biggest banks in this country and, and in a one-hour meeting, now think about this, a one-hour meeting was his testimony t uh, today in questioning. In a one-hour meeting, they were, had to sign a form, write in the amount of TARP money they wanted, and they felt pressured to take the TARP money even if they were, were one of those institutions that didn't want the TARP money to begin with. Well, That's I had Congressman I Conley. Yeah, I have a really different take on it. Um, I think the testimony we heard today and the evidence that has been piling up actually shows collusion between Mr. Lewis and then Secretary Hank Policy, uh, Paulson to cover up the fact that Merrill Lynch had lost $12 billion. And the, and the sweetener for that cover up was, we'll give you TARP money to the tune of $20 billion. And uh, because under questioning today, Mr. Lewis, under oath, said there was no formal agreement reached in December. We know that's not true. Uh, he also indicated that uh, the reason there was no written agreement about this $20 billion uh, was they hadn't quite reached agreement. I have an email right here dating, dated t December 22nd from Ken Lewis to his board that says, I just talked with Hank Paulson. He said that there was no way the Federal Reserve and the Treasury could send in a letter of any substance without public disclosure, which, of course, we do not want. In other words, it wasn't that they lacked an agreement and understanding about the $20 billion. They just didn't want anyone to know because they didn't want the $12 billion Merrill Lynch loss known to the public, which was financing TARP. Wow. Well, Congressman Jordan, you know, both of you actually are calling into question the whole idea, the whole notion of having the government get so involved in affairs and scary. use taxpayer dollars as though it was, in the, according to Mr. Conley, as though it was essentially a bribe. <laughs> Well, I mean, think about this, David. He walked into the meeting on October 13th when these nine CEOs from the biggest institutions in this country were brought to Washington. He walked in not knowing what the meeting was, that the meeting was going to be about. Yeah. We're going to ask you to take the TARP money. They fill in a form, write in the amount of money they're going to get. We're talking billions of dollars, and the whole meeting only took one hour. And then fast forward to December when we have this, this question about whether a Bank of America wanted to proceed with the Merrill Lynch deal. And, and the pressure that they then got, I mean, the first meeting had to influence his, his thinking in the second meeting when they said, look, you don't go along with this deal, you're gone and your board's gone. He remembers back what happened on the 13th. He has to move forward with this deal. This is undue pressure from the government, undue influence into the private sector. Again, why we should never yeah, travel and, down and, this road. And Mr. Conley, I don't want to get so caught in the weeds about this particular story and who is right or who is but the fact is, you know, I know we're dealing in trillions of dollars now, but I think outside of the Beltway, people think of $20 billion as real money. And for, I, I for, too. <laughs> for it to be put down on a piece of paper so casually uh, exactly. is, is, is scary to those of us outside the Beltway. Yes, but remember, they deliberately kept that from the public. This was a misuse Why? of the Why original do you purpose. Why do you think they did? Because they didn't want to reveal the fact that Merrill Lynch had lost $12 billion. That would further destabilize the market. But that is a misuse of what the TARP monies were allegedly supposed to be used for uh, as justified by Hank Paulson, then Secretary of well, we, we see, By the way, we see TARP money right now being used for auto bailouts, too, so there's all sorts of problems yeah. there. Go ahead, there Congressman is. Jordan. Well, I think Jerry would agree with me. This is why we need Hank Paulson and Ben Bernanke to come in front of the Government Reform and Oversight Committee. They should have been in there today. I mean, Ken Lewis sat there for two and a half, three hours. Ben Bernanke and Hank Paulson should do the same thing. We want to ask them some of the same questions that Ken Lewis got today and find out, again, just how much government knew, when they knew it, and what kind of pressure they were exerting on these institutions. Absolutely. I completely agree with uh, Jim. I think we have to have them come before the committee. I also frankly think, uh, and I would call for an investigation by the special IG, uh, Inspector General, for TARP funds, who was appointed uh, earlier this year. Uh, I think he needs to start an investigation about just what happened in this case and why.
Well, Congressman Jordan, when, when you look at what has happened, what we know of what has happened already, and that all of the problems that Elizabeth Warren has spelled out about money that was, yep. that was wasted, misspent in the TARP programs, isn't it time to close this thing down before it yeah. goes any further? Yeah, and, and my colleague, Jeff Hensling, has a bill to do just that, to wind this thing down. We need to get out of this. I remember just, just eight months ago, the debate here in Congress was, if in fact this happens, we get on this TARP program, the last thing we want is the government in the boardroom making decisions. Well, we are long past that, unfortunately. We got, we got the government now with 60% equity stake in General Motors, a majority of the board running the company, closing down facilities. I mean, we, are, we, we need to wind this down as quick as possible, and Jeb's got a great bill. Congressman yeah, I, Conley, I, would you agree? No, I do not. Um, I, I think that this is a bad example. I think it needs to be investigated. I think we need to get to the bottom here. I think this was a misuse of TARP funds. But the fact is, of the matter is that uh, the TARP program, however uh, well managed or badly managed, has helped create some financial stability in the financial markets when we were facing one of the worst meltdowns since the Great Depression in September. Let's Congressman not forget, Jordan, the TARP go ahead. The, the, the TARP program was supposed to go in and buy this mortgage, these mortgage-backed securities, clear this paper out. To date, eight months later, not one piece of mortgage-backed paper has been purchased. So the original uh, focus of this legislation, when they sold it to the United States Congress, has yet to be done. All the more reason why we well, need to hold, get out of this thing on, as Hold on, hold on, guys, possible. because uh, Congressman Jordan, just a moment of uh, a little bit of correction. Some of that paper has been bought, but by the Federal Reserve, not by the Treasury. I mean, that's well, the right, irony exactly. here, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah, but the, but the fact of the matter is, when we had the stress tests on 19 large banks in the United States, they passed. They wouldn't have passed prior to the TARP program. So warts and all, and I have my own doubts about TARP and how well it was managed, especially the first uh, tranche of funding under the previous administration. Nonetheless, I think it's undeniable that financial stability has returned to the markets that was the, you know, here's the what, ultimate goal of having a TARP program. Well, well, look, here's what's undeniable. This year, we are going to run the largest deficit in American history. That's what's undeniable. The taxpayers are on the hook for all this. The what's taxpayers are the ones who have been shortchanged. What's, undeniable, That's why we need to unwind what's it. undeniable is that the previous administration and previous Congresses uh, gave us that deficit, gave us that debt, doubled the national debt in eight brief years. And no one's hands are clean on that. Jim, go ahead. Well, I, look, I, I agree Hank Paulson and, and Ben Bernanke were part of the previous administration. That doesn't excuse this administration for spending even more and making the problem worse. Well, actually, I agree. actually this administration has to try to get us out of the economic ditch that your previous administration Well, got both into. of us, what we found out by the testimony today is that this, this problem, and particularly our attempts to get out of this problem, began before this administration. Uh, but a That's lot right. of the same people in this administration, Congressman yeah. Conley, were working with Hank Paulson, in particular. Tim Geithner. So it, well, they're all part of the same group, and that's what bothers a lot of people looking at the Beltway right now. They see you guys all in it together. Well, we, we may not fully agree on the, the benefits or lack thereof of TARP, but I think both Jim and I agree that in this particular case involving the Bank of America, we need to get to the bottom of what happened here. Well, yeah. well we certainly do. And we hopefully we do. will. You know, at first, guys, I thought we were going to have a problem because we didn't have an individual camera for each one of you, but I like it when we see you two together <laughs> trying to okay. shove okay. each other out of the picture. It's fun. Right. Thank you very much, Jim Jordan, <laughs> Thank you. Jerry Connolly. Good to see you both. Well, the Treasury you, and the Federal Reserve.